All right, so what we have today is our 1989 Mercury 115 horsepower outboard. I have removed the power head from the lower unit. And we had one bad cylinder, and the problem was the ports were not chamfered well enough, and I snagged a ring. And uh, that did... Uh, quite a lot of damage uh, to the liner. And now what we have is a project where we have to reline the bore. All right, first I'm just gonna show you um, <clears throat> the uh, carnage here. Uh, this is the factory liner. These are made to be replaced. It's called a replaceable liner, replacement liner. Um, to get this out, I made a uh, puller tool that would go and grab <clears throat> in a couple of these ports and actually, uh, before it was over, it actually pulled the liner apart, which got half of it out. And then the other half, I actually just used a chisel and, and busted it out. Now, if you wanted to tear this block completely down take all the wiring off of it etc you could heat this whole block up it takes quite a uh, quite a, a lot of heat you have to heat the whole block because it's aluminum and you would expand the aluminum and the sleeve is cast iron so it doesn't grow as much and then it's easier to pull the sleeve out but i just just use brute force and the bore is fine um now, these are installed with three to four thousandths of interference fit. So this bore right now is four thousandths under what the liner uh, is going to be. All right, so first we're going to do some upfront calculating just to um, assess what kind of uh, fit we should have and what we're going to be able to do to get this installed without damaging anything and, and get it held in there uh, just like factory conditions. So first let's measure our bore. We're going to use this, this bore gauge. And as far as the best I can do with the inexpensive mic that I have here, all right, so we're reading about 3.639. And that's about where it should be. And I've written some numbers down here. So that bore, uh, 3.639. <clears throat> and I've talked to LA sleeves, and the sleeve that I'm ordering is 3.644. So what will our interference fit be? That's just the difference. So <clears throat> that's showing me I'd have about five thousandths interference fit to the best of my ability to measure. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's probably uh, what they want is uh, around four thousand. So I'm sure within the measuring accuracy, we're um, that's what we'll we'll get. Okay, so the numbers that I'm showing you here are all. Uh, readily available. Uh, what we have is the bore of the block, which is aluminum, and we times its diameter by the coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminum, which is 13 times 10 to the minus 6 inch per inch degree Fahrenheit. And what goes in here will be what is the change in temperature in Fahrenheit that we can get by heating it up. And that will give us the amount of expansion that will happen in the aluminum. Uh, same thing will go here, but it will be a negative change in temperature, which will be shrinking of this sleeve. Um, and its coefficient is, is much less than aluminum. It's 5.8 times 10 to the minus 6 inch per inch Fahrenheit. So um, you would have to cool the sleeve, you know, almost twice as much to get the same change in, in its diameter. But 
All right, so just estimating what we could do at home here uh, as far as um, heating up the aluminum block with just kind of a torch underneath the uh, cylinder there. Um, if we could get it up to 150 degrees, um, <clears throat> the change in temperature that we'll have is 150 minus room temperature, which is 70 degrees. So that's uh, a change of positive 80 degrees. And we're going to use dry ice to shrink the sleeve. And dry ice has a temperature of minus 109 Fahrenheit. And the total change in temperature again would be um, from room temperature will be minus 179. And when we just multiply these numbers through, um, <clears throat> that will give us for the aluminum the amount of expansion in the diameter of the bore. And that is 0037 inch, which is 3.7 thousandths. And that is growth. So we'll note that with a plus. And the shrinkage of the sleeve, we'll multiply all that through. And what we get is a shrinkage of 0038. And the total um, change in the uh, clearance between those two is going to be uh, the positive minus the negative, which is overall a positive number. Zero zero seven five. So that amount of clearance added by the uh, changes in temperature will accommodate the amount of original interference between the two parts at room temperature. And we will have two and a half thousandths left over, as you can see. And we only need five thousandths, and we're gonna get seven and a half thousandths. So that means that the sleeve should just drop right in. Uh, and, and if it needs a little uh, force, then I can use the, uh, the threaded, uh, puller bar that I showed you, um, but hopefully we won't need to use that because when you do put the sleeve in, you want to make sure you have it aligned properly. Um, and if, if we can just put it in with no resistance, we can get it aligned just right. Now recognize as soon as you put it in, the sleeve will start heating up, the bore will start cooling down, and it's going to lock itself in place. And they do tell you that you should use something like that puller bar to clamp it down so that it doesn't back out when it's um, when everything is shrinking back into place. So we will use the the puller bar regardless. Okay, so I've changed my setup. Uh, I'm not going to use a threaded puller tool to uh, insert through the sleeve and try to pull it into the cylinder. I'm going to use this shop press. I think it'll um, be more solid. I don't think I'm going to need a lot of pressure due to the uh, shrinking of the sleeve and heating up of the block, but in case we do, um, this should be sufficient. Um, I made a plug here that that fits nicely in the sleeve and has a, a nice shoulder on it to bear against the sleeve. Uh, right now that sleeve is is just about starting into the the cylinder at room temperature. So the uh, the heating and cooling should do the trick uh, and that's what we're going to attempt next. 
Okay, so here's our sleeve. We're going to take that and we're going to pack it in dry ice, which is uh, the pellet form, which should be the easiest thing to, to work with. We'll get that done and uh, I will put it in the freezer for some soak time. When I take it out, I'm going to quickly measure it just to see what kind of uh, shrinkage we got. And in the meantime, we'll also heat up our block. All right, we're going to unpack the sleeve from soaking in dry ice. Quick measurement. All right, I'm getting uh, three point six thirty nine, which is about five thousandths under the original size so that's that's quite good same here we should be really good with this hopefully and we're heating the block up over here Six four zero. Oh. So that's pretty good. The original sleeve was three point six four four. All right, I'm taking a temperature reading on the outside of the top of the uh, cover plate. It's about eighty centigrade. One seventy six. 176 Fahrenheit. So that's above the 150 that I said I needed. Uh, it's probably hotter on the inside. So we'll give it a minute and then we'll try to do the inside. And I have an alignment mark here. Okay, so it started in fairly nicely. And it's going, it's going in without the press. Check my alignment mark, I'm still good. Alright, now we're going to install our plug. It will spread the load out. Gotta get it home. That's the platform. I don't know if that's all the way or not. Boy, it looks it looks like it's home. flashlight here. Does it look like it's all the way down? Looks, Looks like, like it, it is. Yep. All right, so we're going to, they say to keep pressure on it till it, till it all comes back to temperature. So that's what we're going to do. And 
and we'll just put another shin in here and take up some space. All right, so one of the things I'd like to leave you with on this is for this particular engine, this outboard motor, uh, due to the design of the cylinder, which has this um, cast in uh, cylinder head, it's, a, it's just a dome shape built into the, the block itself. Uh, and I point that out in the video, but these, these sleeves don't have the typical flange at the top to hold them in. Um, <clears throat> there is no cylinder head to hold the sleeve in. Uh, the only thing keeping it in is, is that friction due to the, the press fit. So at four thousandths press, that's a pretty heavy press fit. So even though we could shrink this with the dry ice quite a bit, like four thousandths, uh, and we heated the block, uh, we still had to use a lot of pressure to get this in. I think the sleeve would start warming up as soon as it's put into that into the cylinder. So you're going to lose your clearance right away. So that doesn't help things. Um, for example, in, in a V8 like this, you can see how there's a flange on the liner at the top, you know, that fits down in the in a groove in the in the casting. And then the cylinder head is going to hold that in place permanently. But these are put in with like a thousandths and a half interference. And I've watched videos and they generally can just use dry ice to shrink the sleeve and then tap it in with a mallet and a wooden block. So we would we would have never gotten our sleeve in um, <clears throat> in this outboard motor uh, without the press. Um, so anyway, if you're going to try this, um, just a word of caution there. You really have to uh, have a good setup. You got to get as much clearance as you can by heating and cooling the parts. So anyway, um, hope this helps you and uh, good luck.